Can we trust this administration? This, as the director of national intelligence admits to a domestic spying program he denied existed under oath as recently as March. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Mr. Clapper's reversal comes on the heels of our Attorney General, Eric Holder, being accused of possible perjury for telling Congress this last month while knowing he had already labeled our own James Rosen a criminal. With regard to the potential prosecution of the press for the disclosure of material, that is not something that um, I've ever been involved in, heard of, um, or would think would be a wise policy. And that's not all. We now know that the former IRS commissioner gave testimony that was not true in 2012 about the IRS targeting conservative groups. What's been happening uh, has been the normal back and forth that happens with the IRS. There's absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4 status. And then there was, was the White House press secretary, Jay Carney, explaining the very small, insignificant role the White House and State Department supposedly had when it came to changing the talking points about the Benghazi terror attack. What the White House and the State Department have made clear that the single adjustment that was made to those talking points uh, by either of those two, uh, these two institutions were changing the word consulate to diplomatic facility. And we now know that was totally false. The White House and the State Department had significant input and were responsible for many of the changes that were made to those talking points. So can we trust them? Joining me now, Leslie Marshall, a nationally syndicated talk show host, Mike Gallagher, host of The Mike Gallagher Show, and Judy Miller, who's a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and author, all our Fox News contributors. Let me start with you on that, Judy. I mean... Well, perhaps English isn't their first language. <laughs> but if you listen to the questions and you listen to the answers, you have to say, what were these officials thinking? If they were not intentionally misleading, they inadvertently misled. And I think that the fact that Eric Holder refuses to provide an explanation for the discrepancy in what he now says he meant and what he said tells us that they don't even feel they owe the American people an explanation. It's it's truly shocking and reprehensible. I mean, they're all they're all pretty blatant. Uh, and the, the 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 one with Clapper, I mean, you can see him how he's doing this, you know, Mike. And, and it's almost like he's that, like yeah. that's my signal for don't ask me about that because I can't talk about that. But you know, the, if you can't, we saw Eric Holder do it just this week. If they ask you something you can't talk about, then you say it's not appropriate for me to address that in this open session. We can talk about that. But you don't lie. Well, I mean, to suggest the Obama administration has a credibility problem is like saying a bear has a tendency to go to the bathroom in the woods. I mean, this, this is bad. Every day is a new series of revelations of, of, of deceptions, of untruths. But, Megan, we're down the rabbit hole in, in Alice in, in Wonderland on this stuff. I mean, let's face it, one of the, the poster children for deception, Susan Rice, has just been recommended by the president to be his national security advisor. I mean, this was a woman who went around, as we know by now, and 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 you know deceived the world. Yeah, but at least Susan Rice, in, at least Benghazi. Susan Rice was given her talking points and her marching orders by someone else and was following orders. The director of the of national intelligence out there specifically saying, I mean, he could not have been more specific, uh, Ron Wyden. That question: right. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all? on millions or hundreds of millions of Americas, Americans. No, sir. I mean, Leslie. No, sir, under oath. The, the, why, where is the accountability? The, wh why, why did we, they just get a pass on this? Uh, did you say Leslie? Sorry, yeah, Megan, Leslie. I was so enthralled in the conversation, seriously. <laughs> um, I, I, no, no, because I, I, I wanna say to you, absolutely, he could have just said, that's classified information, and I can't talk about that. 
But can we also talk about that bear in the woods, my buddy Mike, okay? Let's talk <laughs> about common sense. When I went to Target yesterday and swiped my card, how many millions of people know somebody's lactose intolerance in my family because I bought something that people drink when they can't drink regular milk, not to do any product placement here? The, the reality is when the American government is pulling phone records and has been content, et cetera, since, uh, what, with AT&T in San Francisco 2003, you, how, how are Americans' information not there? You, you put my phone number into Google. You know my name. You know but where Leslie, I live. But how I, come but, I have so Leslie, many emails and phone calls? No, no, no. But, but wait, but, we, but we, just spent, we just spent the better part of, of the, the show debating this NSA program and what it means and what it doesn't mean. Right. This is a different question. Right. I mean, th these are not mm -hmm. underlings in the administration, Judy. These are, t I mean, the Attorney Correct. General, the director, the director of National Intelligence, the White House Press Secretary, the Commissioner of the IRS, so where's the accountability for these, at, at best, misleading statements? That's the problem, Megan. There isn't any. And this is highlighted by the fact that the president, who professed to be troubled by the accusation that James, James Rosen was perhaps violating the Espionage Act by soliciting information as a reporter, which is basically what we all do, uh, the fact that he appointed Eric Holder to look into Eric Holder's behavior <laughs> tells you how serious this investigation is. This and, is and, ridiculous. And, and that's my point. Go ahead, Mike. And Megan, that's my point about about advancing Susan Rice's career. I mean, this like it or not, this is a woman who's been swirling yeah. around in deception over Benghazi, and then she gets this kind of a promotion. The fact is, and, and you're right to hone in on the lack of accountability. That's the whole problem here. There is virtually no accountability over the brazen lies. Listen, I, I think Leslie's right. There's a vigorous debate to be had about this this, this NSA program. Uh, that's fine, but that's not the issue here. The issue is, do you lie? about it under oath when it's brought to your attention publicly. But this Mike, that's the thing, because right? I, I, mean, I, say this as a, I say this as somebody who practices law for nine years. When you take it to, when you're under oath, there is a special obligation. I mean, there, I, I get, you know, people say things to cover their backsides. You're under oath, and you don't Bingo. tell the truth. That is a totally different story. And today, Leslie, the DNI clapper put out a statement in response to the Guardian's report, which broke the story about mm -hmm. the, the phone records, okay? And he's not happy with the leak, which you understand. But he says, in part, right. I believe it's important to address the misleading impression left by the article. What about the misleading impression left by you in your <laughs> congressional testimony, sir? There, there's no question to that. But, Megan, because you are an attorney, and I certainly am not, even though I wanted to be at one time and threw that away for this. Um, w when I looked up what conservative attorneys were even saying with regard to Eric Holder, they're saying misleading, yes. Uh, is he uh, backing off of how much responsibility he had with regard to uh, James Rosen, who I think is an excellent reporter, and I'm biased, by the way, in my opinion. But, uh, uh, yes. But is there... A perjury offense here, and they're saying no contradiction between what he said and what he did isn't there, isn't strong enough for perjury. Now, with regard <sighs> to the head, with regard to the head of the NSA, again, is that the going DNI. to be considered perjury because he chose because he chose not to say that's classified information, and mm. he. Obviously, he didn't, didn't take any off of Americans well, just, like, can to we, do know we have the Clapper information teed up? that he Can we hear accessing? Clapper just one more time? Just, I just want you to hear how clear it is. Do we have it, folks? Do we have Clapper? No one's saying anything to me. They're getting it. They're getting it. Because it's so clear. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's I mean, unambiguous. It, it, all right, listen. Here. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not not wittingly. I'm telling you, that's the tell. That must be the signal. Like, hey, Megan, <laughs> go, I thought I thought perjury the, meant lying <laughs> under oath. I mean, because <laughs> Wyden knew. <laughs> Wyden knew at this point. We have we believe that they were, and he was trying to get this guy to give truthful testimony, and he apparently failed. So where do we go from here? How do, now how do we have the director come out and talk about the misleading report in The Guardian and not his own statements, Mike?
Well, and, and, and of course, maybe, Leslie, that's why you, you chose not to pursue the path of law, because I'm thinking lying under oath is perjury. I'm thinking that if you swear to tell the truth and you blatantly lie, that's going to be a problem. Listen, Megan, all we can do is hope that the media, which is, I believe, frankly, and it's hard not to merge these two issues, but is sort of ginning up, ginning up the, the reaction to the NSA, you know, scandal here of the phone records and all that, because they know it started under, under President Bush. I'm hoping that all all this scrutiny about this administration, that, that, that all of a sudden things are going to start to be to fall into place and accountability is going to be had by know. folks I mean, Judy, over Benghazi, you, over the IRS. You have covered I, a lot hoping. of administrations. Do they all lie? I mean, are we that? Is, do we have to just accept that this is what they do? I think. Ma 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 Megan, I, for Judy. thank you for saying that. Your, your, previous, <laughs> you know, your previous two guests who were from the NSA said, they're, we're, they're just human. People who work for these agencies are human. And that's why we're supposed to have checks and balances. And that's why not presenting misleading information to the U.S. Congress is so vital. And if these people just walk away without an explanation or a reprimand, then it'll be the media and the American people who are to blame for not demanding an explanation. Now that this information right. and these two programs are public, we need to have that debate. And let's know, let's not throw in Guantanamo and everything else that anybody wants to talk about. Let's talk about civil liberties, free press, and protection of privacy versus national yep. security. Yep. We've got to have that talk. And I will, I will leave leave you three with this soundbite from President Obama earlier this morning. And if people can't trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust uh, federal judges to make sure that we're abiding by the Constitution, due process, and rule of law, then we're going to have some problems here. Amen. Panel, thank you all so